Welcome to the OSR's podcast where we talk to our RuneScape content creators about RuneScape content. I am Mitt Cow, and yes, my mic is not muted this time. Followed by... Good on boys, ranks as always. And hey, it's me, Rice Cup. And today we have a special friend of mine. His name's Cam. His hands don't work, but he still somehow can play RuneScape. So you're gonna, he's going to explain to us all of that you know, during this podcast and learn all about the amazing life of the no-handed RuneScape and, you know, all that good stuff. How are you doing? Yeah, we, uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm doing good. We make do with what we got. And yeah. we're still gaming. So That's what's yeah, that's up, dope. man. It's working out. Hey, dude, RuneScapers, it doesn't matter what we are, man. We all play the same Java-based one-pixel-ass game. And somehow we always complain about it, too. So welcome to the crew, man. Glad to have you on. <laughs> So um, should we should we start off with a general Q and A for Cam boys? Yes, yes, yes. Yes, How yes. about uh, the origin stories? You know, like before and after. You know, like uh, a good a good uh, general you know info for the viewers. Um. Well, uh, before injury, Cam and like me now, are, I feel like two different people. It's like very like. I'm very disassociated from like my able-bodied life. So I used to be like very active, very athletic, like always out and about with my friends, always doing stuff. And now I'm a bit more introverted and kind of just um, focus on myself and like my physical recovery as a quadriplegic. Um, I guess. Like from the start, uh, I broke my neck when I was 15. Uh, I'm 22 now. I uh, broke my neck at the C4, C5 uh, vertebrae, which um, paralyzes pretty much everything from like shoulders down. So when I was first paralyzed, all I could do was like broke my shoulders like that, and like I could bring my arms up, and then I couldn't them back out um but that was back in 2015 february 1st super bowl sunday so i um uh, not the biggest fan of the nfl or the super bowl anymore Neither. Uh, but um yeah i was in icu um like near death for 31 days oh, then God. Flew to an inpatient hospital, um, lived there for two and a half months, did occupational, like, physical therapy. Um, I don't know if you guys can see this. I think my name is kind of in the way. Uh, I have a trach from my uh, initial injury. I was trached for two and a half, three months. Uh, Like, couldn't even eat on my own type of thing. Um, and then I moved out to where I live now, Utah, and there's a place called, uh, actually, I'm not going to name the place. I don't Fair. fully dox Wise. myself. Fair. But, uh, <laughs> That's good. Yeah. But it's a really, it's a really great place. Um, uh, they have helped, um, I think like nine or 10 fully paralyzed quadriplegics like learn to walk again like fully like have bowel bladder sexual function back live fully independently and um i was told two months after my injury oh you're never gonna feed yourself you're never gonna do this you're never gonna breathe without a a ventilator you're never gonna be able to like take a piss cath by yourself stuff like that and I mean, I got, I, I fucking am. That's what's so, up. Another important thing that I need to add, um, that was my idea. I need to, I need to preface that. Uh, hmm. Fifteen hundred likes on the video <laughs> to make my hands work again. Um, <laughs> let's not be selfish now. Let's think about about the the content creators in the RuneScape community that some people may watch. Who, who um, told you that? Yeah, I'm gonna go beat uh, his ass if I can get the <laughs> cheeks real quick. Uh, a, a, a very pessimistic doctor 
<laughs> Why do those that. exist, man? They just they just feel the need to be cunts. I mean, what 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 the fuck, man? That's I think, why. I think they have to like tell you like the very worst that could happen. Yeah, because um, I mean, like you you got to hear what you mm-hmm. got to hear, and like I am kind of um like a like a special case, like I regained the use of my wrist like this, which is huge in terms of spinal cord injury independence. Because if like, I'm just trying to do something with a floppy wrist, I can't do anything. But let's say these are my like daily meds. Let's say I I have these here. I can have my wrist floppy and get my hand over it. And then when I pull my wrist up, my fingers tighten and I can grab stuff and then they fall when I let my wrist relax. So that was like a huge step in terms of independence. I figured out how to eat, how to text, how to type, all that stuff. And that has slowly converted into gaming on this mouse oh nice yeah that's good stuff so how does that work this mouse um it has four corner buttons and the top right corner button works as like the the mouse move the camera scroll wheel button the bottom right button um, I'm wondering if I can pick this up and show you kind of how my hand rests on it while I'm gaming. It's like this. My pointer finger is able to press uh, the camera move button. I can click with... Um, I can left click with underneath this knuckle right here, like the palm side of it. And then I use my thumb and like go like this with my hand and like press the right click like that and then i use my entire left arm to like move the ball around like that wow that's crazy um so cam if you don't mind me asking if we can go back a little bit um what exactly was the incident that caused all of this um yeah (laughs) so it's kind of a boring and anticlimactic story but I was jumping on a bench like jumping off a bench into a big snow pile with my friends and um, basically when I jumped my foot slipped and my head went down uh, and I landed on my head Um, pretty much that's it it's like a three foot fall from a bench wow Gosh, that's crazy. Right. Yeah, something I so know. simple, but it's devastating. Life yeah. changing. That's that's insane. Like people walk away from like flipped and rolled cars and like yeah, stuff right. Like that. And I fell off a bench, dude. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <man. laughs> that's bad you, RNG, man. Bad, <laughs> yeah. bad RNG. Do you now hate benches for the rest of your life? Like um, when you see it, when you're just like. <laughs> Fuck, fuck benches on yeah. my chest. <laughs> I hate just, and yet, just I, like Snoop Dogg I, said, fuck all the benches, man. That's what I'm talking about. I, I actually have a picture of me going back to the same bench and I had a couple buddies like lift me up onto it and I like crossed my leg so it looked like I wasn't paralyzed. I was, just, I was dressed all nice. I was the <laughs> commencement speaker at my graduation and uh, yeah, it was a, it's a funny picture. Nice. Getting paralyzed on the bench that that defeated me. Jeez, you literally have an arch enemy in your life, man. That's that's something, bro. Um, it, uh, spe- definitely is something. Yeah. Um, speaking about RuneScape, uh, so when did you start playing RuneScape? I know you were talking about it before, but yeah. So I started back in, or I guess. So I played for like a week in like second or first or second grade and it 
It's funny because it lined up exactly with the week that they took out Wilderness and Free Trade and stuff. Oh. Because my buddy was like, oh man, I'm going to give you like 500k, I'm going to give you full rune, we're going to go do this. And I'm like, what? This, that sounds so cool. And and yeah, no, I, after they took it out, <laughs> I, I never logged back in. That's uh, fair, you know. Spoiled. I also didn't log back in after they took that out, so we got something <laughs> in common. Yeah, but I found it. I, I, I can't remember how I got back into it. Um, but I started back in December 2020 and um, spent like four to five months getting my quest cape and fire cape. And um, now I have young, young left pet and. Ooh. uh Inferno PB is 58. That's insane, man. <laughs> yeah, I've been watching God. some of it. It's pretty crazy. Nice. You didn't tell uh, me this man's a god, bro. No, what I said, the hell? I said he, did, he did a bunch of TVM. Damn. Jesus. Jesus. Inferno? I haven't even done Inferno, man. I got the wave 47, died in one hit, rage, never, never again. Nah, never again. Oh, it's, it's cost me, like, so much money. And it, <laughs> it hurts the bank. And man, I'm, I'm going to have to watch your streams. I want to watch you do gr uh, corrupted Gondola. That yeah, it's really I don't even, interesting. How? That's insane. I need to see that for myself. How you're doing that with that mouse pad? That's nuts. Um, yeah. So there's another aspect to how I play, um, which I can't really like show because it, it's like a program on screen. It's called Alt Controller, and it puts like a box on my screen, and when I put my mouse inside the box, it acts as like a single press. So I have like four or five boxes on my screen. I have like the bottom right of my inventory, my prayer uh, F key, like to the right of my inventory. If I move my mouse into that box, it pulls up my inventory. Above the inventory is a box for mage, uh, like mage spells. Um, and then I have combat styles in a box bottom left. So oh. I just move my mouse like into the thing. I don't have to click or anything, but it acts as like a one-to-one -one button press, and it's how I do my F keys. Do you, do you think that uh, RuneScape is um, doing everything they can to help with your disability when playing the game, or is there stuff they can improve on? <laughs> uh, kind of more of a joke. I, uh, uh, a friend... Uh, Nickel Sickle, he recently maxed, and uh, congrats to him, by the way. Um, Mod Ash was at his maxing party, and oh, I, nice. asked, I asked him, I said, hey, can I get an in-game cosmetic, um, like a wheelchair or something? <laughs> I think that'd be a great, like a great memoriam to Crippledscape. Like, I would rock that everywhere, absolutely. And I know, I know, like... I have I have disabled friends that would absolutely as well. And he he replied, No, that's not really realistic in this. But like the best we could do is like a flying a flying carpet or maybe a gnome copter. Which like I think is kinda cool, but no um, culture. Stay yeah. with the lore, you know. There's no real yeah. wheelchair. Apparently no disabled people in RuneScape, just a I, bunch I, of people I, named Allah. Just <laughs> <laughs> you know what's funny? If if you go to the RuneScape wiki, um if you type in broken hands, there's an NPC called Broken Hands. There He's is. the guy on the Zolra Island where you can watch people kill Zolra. <laughs> His name is Broken Hands. Hey. There you oh, go. yeah. <laughs> I swear I've seen that guy before. It makes, <clears throat> yeah. I was yeah. thinking for some reason like um, Canifist, though. I don't know why. Yeah, kind of the same vibe. Um, back, getting back to the original question. Um, I don't know. I I think I think it's kind of hard to make a game like super accessible or adapted towards disabled people when like there is like a physical function behind it. Um, I think the program that I use called Alt Controller. I don't know who made it, but um, they, like, I couldn't 
do my fire cape before I use that. And then now I can do LMS, Inferno, CG, everything. Like Oh, you do LMS, bro? Do you clap cheeks? I oh man. I grinded seventy five LMS points yesterday. And I am not going back there for a long time. <laughs> but I got my rune pouch on my group iron, so I'm happy. Nice. Nice, dude. Uh, um, so interesting. I, I'm just, like, when you're talking about this, um, the script or the program that you're using on your screen, like, as soon as you started talking about that, I was thinking, man, Jagex might detect that as, like, a bot or something like that or something fishy. Like, have you ever worried about that, or have you given that any thought? You know, I I have, but also, it it is one to one button press, technically. Um, it, there is no button being pressed, but it is an action. Like for me, it's like I'm moving my whole hand like this, like yeah. rolling the ball and letting it continue to roll. And then putting my hand back on it and stopping it, um, to to get to the ability to even play like normally, you know, like so it is kind of a worry, but I think if Jagex bans me for for doing something to improve my gaming, if I if I posted that on 2007 scape i don't think i don't think i'd be banned for very long you know no uh, yeah no yeah. honestly <laughs> i'd like to watch and see them squirm all right exactly, if they did something exactly. like that i i i've said it on stream before kind of jokingly but like um if if it is against game rules ban me but it's not they're not uh, gonna do it they, they yeah, wouldn't no. you know if I they mean, knew the circumstance they wouldn't do it like crippled scape himself set it up for me like he showed me how to do all the all the stuff and and he played with it for however many years so um, yeah now okay. um speaking of crippled scape uh did you guys know each other pretty well then i um n- not really we we talked a couple times and um he helped me um with a lot of stuff with that program, with uh, like how to do fire cape, um, best ways to level. Um, but I didn't really know him that well. We just chatted in game every now and then, and um, he uh, he he kind of motivated me to to get back into streaming and. Um, just gaming in general, and I I, I figured out uh, about his like scenario and started watching some of his streams, and um, just like his his attitude about almost everything was um never never too bad. And it was always understandable if he was in a frustrated mood, but that was very rarely, you know? Yeah. And you know, jokes always fucking just, I don't know. Um, and uh, it, it made me realize that, like, I, I have that ability. And um, while I am a lot more able-bodied than him and I'm a lot more blessed, um, I, I I can do the same thing that he does in in a sort of different way I think, and I I used to stream Fortnite and I used to have 50k on YouTube for uh, Fortnite, um, and then I just got into like a bad mental state and just kind of let it all go, and um, yeah no talking to him and like his just like willingness to just reach out and help. Uh, a fellow disabled friend um just like flicked a switch in my brain that said hey you need to do this too and um i didn't get that much time to know him unfortunately because he started um progressing is that the right word uh i think so yeah 
and started playing less um and unfortunately passed away rest in peace to yeah yeah rest um, in peace a great Sadly, guy i didn't um, i didn't know cripplescape too well either but i stopped in a couple streams you know i don't really watch twitch streamers too often but at any time i stopped in not only was he doing some insane content like just mind blowing content i couldn't do content i wouldn't want to yeah, do he completely the, uh, inferno yeah yeah, but he'd always be cracking jokes. And, um, you know, it's not a pity laugh. I was bawling. I, it, it was funny <laughs> as fuck. That guy was hilarious. And I just am kind of sad I didn't watch him more because, yeah, he did pass. And I didn't know his whole backstory, but I definitely wanted to bring him up in this in this podcast, man. Rest in peace, dude. You were a beast in RuneScape, and you were fucking Inspiration. hilarious. Inspiration. Seriously Absolutely. hilarious. Man. Absolutely. Yeah, no, I'm I'm kind of in the same boat as you. I did. I didn't really get to know him as well as I really wanted to, and um, yeah, no, he's he's definitely like my main inspiration for um, like grinding RuneScape so hard. Um, there, there are literal times where I am like in Inferno or like in CG, and I have to go back in CG for the fifth time, and it's like. Fuck, I, 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 I have hands, like not not functioning ones, but like I, I literally can control a mouse with actual physical hands. This man used his eyes, <laughs> Dude, for real. Like and, how? And his head. And Didn't like, he have like a, a tube in his mouth too? Yeah, I don't. A, a sip and puff. I don't even. I don't. Insane. I didn't even really know his full setup. It was crazy. Seriously, man, it, it it is it is, um, but yeah, rest rest in peace, Cripplescape, man. Rakes, did um, you ever get to watch uh, Cripplescape at all? Yeah, I think um, I think I like, have um, to be right back really quick. Yeah, yeah, it's no okay, worries, man. man. No worries. All, right, all good. Yeah, I think um, I may have hosted him once or twice, and vice versa as well. He he was just a really nice guy, like super easy going and stuff, you know. Yeah, man. Um, he was he was great, dude. Oh my god, I went to his stream. He was cracking jokes. I was dying. I was legit. Like I, I started raiding him. I was, dude, the man had like he could have been a stand up comedian. I, I know there's a couple yeah. um, disability people who do stand up. Sadly, I don't think that could have been for him as his uh, disability was that that crazy. But oh man, he would have killed it. He would have absolutely uh, killed it, man. Um, but while think, our um, Dude, wasn't it? I I have a funny feeling he was in um Oblivion. Wasn't he in the uh is that right Rice Cup? Do you know that for sure? If he Oblivion? was in Oblivion, the PVM clan? Um yeah. no, I don't think so. I'm I don't, oh, I don't he know wasn't. too much about him other than like Cripplescape, other than he did the Inferno. Because that was like a big thing that he did. <clears throat> like he was uh he spent a ton of time doing it and you know, eventually he uh you know, he got it done. Yeah, yeah he, it was pretty much like stuff, an impossible man. thing. Goals. He's still impossible for me. I mean, <laughs> DOB <laughs> yeah. is impossible for me, bro. Yeah. Uh, but yeah. So we will be also covering later on the delayed of a uh, league. Just so you guys know that we do want to cover that and uh, talk about league as well, because Cam is playing group Iron Man, and I believe he's going to be playing a uh, league for the first time on his non-permanent game mode. But uh, we'll cover that later. Speaking about Group Iron Man, Cam, are you uh, back, by the way? Um, yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. Um, just uh, real quick before um, uh, we talk about Group Iron Man, uh, 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 just a little annoyance about uh, my disability life that I feel like I want to mention. I I feel like people overlook, like, Oh, he's in a wheelchair. That just means like he can't walk, right? No, there's like so many other things behind it. And one of like the biggest things and like biggest annoyances with my life is like going to the bathroom and like pissing um, because I don't have control of that. So that's why I just said, oh, I got to be right back and then just kind of left. No warning. I uh, have like 30 seconds to a minute to like go get a catheter in and then hopefully not you know like piss myself but um yeah i have to like cut stream 
um, off uh, to BRB um, way more than most streamers should. Mm. <laughs> Probably like five to seven, eight times in like a four, three, four hour stream. So it's just like the little, the, like the littlest things that like don't occur to most people are uh, just like, uh, I feel like the biggest problems with disabilities. It's not like the, the uh, being unable to walk aspect. It's the everything else along with it thing. Yeah. I mean, if you got to go, you got to go, man. If it's I mean, 10 times a stream, who cares, you know? If you got to piss, mean, yeah. you piss. Yeah. yeah. It's, I, mean, um, it's, I just uh, wanted to share real quick that I don't have, obviously, the same problems. But just to relate a little bit, I constantly be shitting. So I understand like four or five times a stream, I'll just have to run and just book it. And then and they'll be what like, oh, it's hell? chair stream, bro. And it'll just be a chair sitting there for like 10 minutes. And yeah, like, all right, boys, hopefully that was the last one. And then I'll just fucking I'll swoop right on back. Bro, dude. Do, yeah, you, that do you have like you IBS or have you got like got, IBS or something or I, I don't know what it is, but and I don't feel you're paying 100 percent, of course. But I just wanted you to know. Hey, <laughs> viewers will be there. You, you know, they'll watch a chair, they'll watch a bed. It, it's whatever, man. They, if, if the content's good, you're slapping ass on group Iron Man. It's okay, dude. Nothing wrong with that. Yeah. Cause I'm, I, I feel it. <laughs> I kind yeah. of, um, I, I kind of, in, in a sense, I, I recently had a like a personal thing where basically my um my grandma had a mini stroke, and um something that she said to me really like struck a chord and i feel like it's along the same lines with what you just said where she um when she was having the stroke and she didn't know she was having it one of the signs to her was that she felt like she needed to go for a wee right and like the second that she fought it she had already gone like mm. she had like lost oh. the ability to it's be able to bit. be like i need yeah. i need to go and it was just like it just happened and she told me that, and I, when she told me, it made me, like, I just had a wave of emotion just hit me, because I was like, wow. Because it's something you don't think about. It, it's like, if you need to go for a pee, you know that you have, like, you know, X amount of time to get to the toilet. Sometimes you can, like, just put it off. But, like, yeah. I, I think that is quite an, an important and interesting thing you've brought up there. It's like, people don't think about that stuff. I know I didn't before I had that conversation, you know? Like... Like I, I am constantly keeping in the back of my mind: Can I reach a catheter right now? Like, do I have access to P? And like, I mean, yeah, everyone like is always thinking, "Oh, is there a bathroom here?" But it's not like this is immediate. This has to happen right now, or my entire day is altered. Like, I have to go home, change, go back to where I was, restart what I was doing. It's like either. A, 15 20 minute process uh if you're at home or like a three four hour like alter to your schedule so it's like being disabled is not the hard part it's figuring out how to be disabled uh and live a normal life if that makes yeah. sense it does. so you you just said it have to go home so whereabouts are you right now and what what is like the living situation for you so, so right now I'm at home. I just meant like hypothetically if I was out in public. Ah, I see. Um, yeah. Uh, living situation for me is I live with a, a good friend, a roommate. Um, and then I have caregivers come uh, Monday through Friday um, for six hours a day just to help me with like groceries, uh, eating, um if I want to go to a movie, things like that. And then I have a CNA, a certified nursing assistant, for three hours in the morning every day. Okay. Well, it's pretty uh, cool being living with your housemate. I mean, mm -hmm. I can relate to that. That's a good time. Man, you guys playing League of Legends all the time, dude. I don't know about <laughs> that. Yeah. Rake seats. <laughs> he, won't, of... dude, he won't play RuneScape, man. I, I he just won't do it. It annoys me. Whenever I bring, because he used to play, and he was never into it like I was. But he uh, he won't play the game. He just wants to play League of Legends. It makes me sad. 
Now, speaking of other games, Cam, are there other games that you are able to play or like to play? And, uh, you know, just to make a light joke, hopefully not too serious. If you can't play League of Legends, you're not really missing out on anything. It's uh, it's quite trash. <laughs> I, um, so I actually have a few friends who have tried to get me into, into League. And honestly, I just feel like there's too many buttons. There's too and many I characters. Just, <laughs> yeah, there's there's too, too many, too much, too... too uh, but um, no hate to any League of Legends players. I I couldn't care less. I, yeah, um, I, I I did play a bit of like Call of Duty and Fortnite though before I uh, like refound RuneScape. Now Fortnite, you said you had a channel on YouTube with 50k subs, which is incredible. I don't even have the capabilities to play Fortnite. You know, there's that, that meme where if you shoot someone once, he John Wicks and makes a whole like mansion in two seconds. And like <laughs> I've tried to play and that's not a meme. That's true. Like people will literally build a fort in like a second. And I just sit there like, nah, no, thank you. So how, how, how did you play Fortnite? I mean, I'm still struggling with that game. I um, have, I play with the Xbox adaptive controller so I'll have like a normal Xbox controller on my lap and I can press uh, X, Y, A, B uh, with like the same place on my hand that I use uh, click, uh, left click and stuff with RuneScape. Um, and then I would use my left hand to control the left stick and my right hand to press face buttons and control the right stick. and then. To use like triggers, I would have like this. It's like a big controller, like this big, like this tall. It has two like big. Uh, I want to say like grapefruit like circumference size buttons. Um, probably like five inches across. Uh, uh, that act as A and B, and then there are like three point five millimeter jack. Uh, plugs where you can plug a button that you can attach to your body in different places so i would have a button on the inside of each elbow and then i would have that big controller next to me that would have the two buttons one for jump one for build um i would have my right elbow button be right trigger my left elbow button was left trigger and then i played with a mouse button or a mouth button to do left bumper my god yeah, it's like a vr suit that That's is crazy incredibly was, insane man using any was, body part that can move it was a whole it's a true process. gamer moment that, that truly is it yeah um when he said grapefruit by the way did anyone's mind go somewhere because the word grapefruit to me has been completely ruined from twitch uh, i don't know anyone for, else yeah it does for me <laughs> it did now. Wait, what, what, what is yours it did now like? My, mine has nothing to do with Twitch. It's to do with uh, like a tutorial of kinds. That's, yeah. yeah it's that's not the way. They would constantly spam it. And I would just hear, <laughs> like, just oh, randomly. No. Like, ah, oh, <laughs> man. So, Grapefruit's been ruined for me. I'm sorry. It's, it's over. I don't think I've ever had one, anyways. I, I, I don't even know if we get grapefruit in the UK. So, we no, get honestly, grapes. They're terrible. They're terrible. They're old people eat them because they live longer. I don't know why. I don't know why people eat them. They're oof. not a fan of grapefruit. Huh? No, it's sour. I'm not even a fan of oranges. I get canker sores like super easily. So I'm just weak blooded. Uh, <laughs> so we were talking about group Iron Man earlier, by the way. Are you yeah. uh, one enjoying the group Iron Man? I believe it's your first Iron Man ever. And are you are you sweating it or do you have a strat or are you just casually playing it with some buddies? Um, so. Uh... It, it is technically my second Iron Man, but my first Iron Man is a hardcore that has not left Lumbridge and has 10 wood cutting. Um, I have not started that yet, but after, after playing this group Iron, which I personally have rushed a good bit, and a couple people on my team have like grinded a, a good bit. We had someone, uh, my friend Cookie, he grinded from... One or thirty-five to eighty-two fishing, uh, no, like not fishing any permits, and then we got like max fish, uh, high or high-level fish, 
Um, we have someone going to 99 at Wintertot right now. Nice. Someone rushing Hunter. Um, so it, it's kind of a leisurely rush is what is what we're calling it. I sit in bed most of the day and play RuneScape anyways. So I have a bit more time on my hands um, to uh, grind. I I think I'm like 8, 20 something total. So not like crazy far, but definitely a good bit of work has been put in to the account. You're so like humble, man. What are you talking about? That's you're sweaty as fuck with your group, bro. You guys are going hard as hell. I, I was watching your last stream there, and you guys were you were in Fremenic. That's not leisurely, bro. You guys are sweating it, man. I, you might be farther than Rixy Squad, and I know they're going hard right now. Oh, uh, bro, I, I don't even want to. I don't even want to talk about it. Yeah, no, yeah, he's, he's I can't talk sweaty. about that. I'm sweaty. too happy. I'm too excited. You're gonna have to wait for the video. I'm sorry. Well, what what's your total though, Rixy? Um, seven hundred and seventy-two. See what I'm saying? You're beating his ass, and it's his job. I mean, look at that, bro. <laughs> yeah. That's insane. So, so I, I don't have any of you guys heard of the streamer Falampel? Yeah, I've heard. I've heard the name, but I haven't watched. I've heard the name. Oh, I've been he, watching streams, sadly. He's he's been pretty excited about Group Iron Man for a while, and he was hoping for ten person teams before they announced five person, and. Um, definitely, definitely would have been cool, but uh, it probably would have been hard uh, to organize all that. I don't know the logistics of Jagex, but um, yeah. So we ended up just doing like a A and a B team, um, and his his uh, his team has some very very sweaty gamers on it. Like most of them, um. Like they have a berserker ring already. Um, uh, almost all of them are one thousand total. Um, Wample has a Tob Casey. <laughs> what? Like, what like just, the fuck, dude? <laughs> so I'm I'm hearing about that in the Discord. So uh, yeah, I I'm definitely putting a good bit of time into it, but comparatively, I feel a bit behind. I mean. I I don't even know. Rice, what's what's your total? I know you're also grouping it up. Uh, just want to get a like, good feel. I'm at like twelve hundred. <sighs> but I do a lot of questing and stuff though. What is your bank already a bill? Yeah. Nah. <laughs> nah. You got have, like a I couple of TVOs. Like I, I, mean. I feel the need to defend myself, huh. by the way. <laughs> because my total <laughs> my total may only be seven hundred and seventy two. However, I listen, I told you guys my plan. It was yeah, gonna be the rush. most uh efficiently unefficient rush you guys have ever seen i have been prey flicking and killing lizard man shamans now for over a week okay yeah so i haven't been questing i've not been chopping logs i've not been winter todding i've been killing shamans day in yeah day exactly. out total, total okay. levels aren't like the indicator you know Nah, no, nah, it's we not. Gotta give racy shit. Exactly. Yeah, just it's not about the quality. It's about the quan. No, I, the, I, the other way around. Quanti- yeah, not about the quantity. <laughs> yeah. That's it. You got it. You got it. I, I do have like- a dragon defender yeah. though. I'm pretty happy about that. Oh, that's huge. That's pretty big. Very yeah. strong, man. I, I feel like playing a group Iron Man just to beat Rexy's total and then stop. Just just because I feel like a couple days max, dude. That's all it would take. You, you know, you you could probably get my total level in two days. If you wanted to, like, if you grinded it out, you could. I don't know if I'm that pity though. I'm like, I'm like this close though to doing it. I don't know, man. Um, speaking of like really hardcore PVM, I'm not a PVMer. Rakesy's a PVMer. Rice is a PVMer. Um, any other PVM challenges, Cam, that you've uh, done? Like, you were talking about Tob, your buddy done it. Is that something you guys are aiming to do on a group Iron Man? Um, yeah. So the goal of the group Iron is to experience the game. And experience PVM, learn um, the good parts, the, the not the not good parts, uh, the the everywhere in between, and um, it's definitely going to take a while because everyone uh, kind of snagged up their own responsibility, uh, snagged up their own like, oh, I'll do this, I'll do this, and we're all kind of sort of rushing one thing to slowly even out in the middle and be able to like 
VM, do DKs, do bandos, do stuff like that together. And it's definitely going to be a fun uh, grind. Um, my job is like the LMS slash Wildy Slayer slash Combat uh, Rush Song of the Elves guy. <laughs> um, mm. So I am pretty much just waiting for planks, uh, supplies, quest items, skills, and then it's Song of the Elves Rush for me until I can get uh, blades for the boys, you know? Oh, you're going right to the gauntlet, aren't you? Dude, I like how you said... Nice. Nice. I like how you said said blades... uh... Implying yeah, you're gonna yeah. get more than one. My God, how many how many blades have you had so far on your ever account? None. <laughs> <laughs> He's just really optimistic. Listen, yeah, one day, I, I, one day. I, I worded my my young left flex very very wisely. I got it at 97 KC. I did not grind very hard. You know, I also got a young lift, but it was on a, a the last leagues, so I don't get to see that pet I've ever. Never and I didn't. One. I didn't, oh, I, I didn't even get any points for it, but I also have it every month for a year. So, you know, I'm also flexing, man. I got it too. Uh, uh, yeah, I'm at 2K with that one. <laughs> oh, yeah, it must suck, dude. It must suck yeah, to suck, man. Whatever. It's okay. Uh, so, I'm kind of interested in your group Iron Man plan because it actually is very intricate. Like, you, you already have a strat, your boys have a strat. Is there a part where you guys all meet up? You said DKs, but is there like a, a, like a big plan? Like, what's, what's when you guys meet up? What are you guys going to be doing? Um, we got to get like basic combat stats first. We still got someone who's 10 HP. That's so, the winter tall guy, huh? Yeah. Um, what, what is he even doing? Just grabbing seeds for the boys? Like, what do you what do you get from WT? Um, so, so he he's also gonna be doing Song of the Elves. Uh, I think I I haven't really talked to him about it, but he has like almost sixty construction or something, like Adam. 50, 57, 58, 60 maybe. That's hard. And, he has Iron Man. Yeah. So that's what I'm thinking. Like. I um I I I gotta get some fishing levels because I'm like thirty fishing, but um I'm gonna do a bunch of temp, get a bunch of planks from temp. Hopefully, um he and I are gonna kind of be on the PVM side of things. Um, eventually, once everyone gets their combat stats up, we'll train arrows. Probably, um, almost everyone is forty three prayer. Um, we are the winter talk guy. Almost has thirty two herb lore for prey pots. Um, yeah, like I said, it's kind of a leisurely grind, a leisurely rush. So we have like ideas, but nothing specific planned out. Seems good to me, man. That seems pretty thorough. I don't know. Uh, just because a group Iron Man, there's so much to plan. Every person has a role, and then you got to somehow intermingle that. And I bet like Rice's plan is probably like wild, just like Rakesy's, where it's just so complicated and complex and stuff. I just like want to go bossing. That's really it. <laughs> just, just straight up. Um, I, honestly, I kind of want to hear some more group Iron Man strats. Though, like Rice, Rakesy, do you like how's how's your strats going along so far? Uh, all right, I, I guess I'll go. So, I mean, I've just been focusing on. Uh, Slayer and trying to get my fire kit right now, but I'm gonna be like the main Slayer guy, so I'll you know I'll hit up most of the Slayer bosses and and fund you know the boys with Slayer related drops like Black Mass or you know Cerberus drops or whatever. And I have my other teammate; he's rushing Saldiel, so he's just gonna go to Gauntlet and try to get you know the uh, the Crystal Enhanced Seed, so he can uh, get the new bow and yeah, it'll help out a lot at like God Wars and stuff because that's re- it's really good there. So, and then I have my third guy. He's Fuse. He's just kind of just going for barrels, gloves, just covering other things that we haven't done. So, like, I'm not doing a lot of skilling, like herb learn stuff. Like, I'm farming all the herbs, but I'm giving it to my my teammate though, so he can train his herb to do something else. God, so I'm not really what? skilling. Like, I what? I'm like gathering stuff, but not so I can use it, so I can give it to my team. So, What's your Slayer? Just curious. What's your Slayer level? Five right now. 
Yeah, fifty five right now. Nice. Getting there. Getting there. Nice. Uh, I, feel, I feel like Mint's starting to realize he's getting some FOMO. He's missing uh, out. Dude, yeah, little, I dude. honestly, dude, we could have made the dream team here on the podcast, man. But you're this, too busy playing New World. Yeah, I, I was New literally World. gonna say that I'm kind of missing RuneScape, especially when Cam starts to explain it and how how intricate his plans are and how much he's enjoying it. I'm like, dude, RuneScape really has a lot, right? We just all take it for granted, but it really has a lot going for it with a point to click. And uh, I'm not saying I'm sad I miss Group Iron Man, but I honestly am getting some FOMO right now uh, for for playing RuneScape at the moment. I yep. feel like RuneScape absolutely has so much because a bunch of my friends or like whoever I'm talking to asks, "Oh, what is RuneScape?" And I'm like, "Oh, it's a point and click <laughs> MMORPG." They're like, "Oh, what's that?" And then I explain that. And then they're like, oh, well, what do you do? I'm like, well, where do you start? Yeah. You can do anything except sit in a wheelchair. Huh. <laughs> it's, it's a good way to explain it. There's a lot. Yeah, um, I, I often have that problem as well, describing RuneScape to people. Because I'm just like, I'm like, you can do anything. I, I was like, do you, you want to be some like stock exchange guy? You can do that. You want to go in the wilderness? You want to go and kill players and do PvP? You can do that. You want to sort your bank out and make it all fancy, like The Sims or something? You can do that. Like It's just an endless game. There's so much to do yeah, in it. Yeah, whatever you want. Pretty much, man. Um, I don't know if you guys have any more RuneScape-related questions. I would definitely like to bounce into the weed subject, if y'all don't. Oh, weed? Well, <laughs> dude, I'll, yeah. I'll ask... Um, Real quick, I, I know you said that you first played RuneScape way back in the day when the Grand Exchange was removed. Um, so to clarify, when did you officially start replaying the game? What was the year? Uh, December 2020. December 2020. Oh, wow. It's not... and it, Wow, that's not even that long ago. And You actually have an Infernal Cape already. No, no. Uh, my PB is 58. Uh, wave 58. Oh, I see. Oh, I, I thought think. he was doing it in 58 minutes. I'm like, yeah, oh, God. Jesus no. Christ. No. That's what I thought. I was like, shit. <laughs> I'm bad. I'm a miscommunication. Yeah, no Inferno Cape yet. This man words so, his eventually. words well. Eventually. So we all think about stuff. And Wait, like, so yeah. just, just to clarify, you have killed a Hoofling, right? The corrupted kind. The yeah. Hoofling, you mean the Hunliff? Yeah. Oh, yeah, he's leaf. killed it. Yeah, he's, he's okay. Okay, yeah. just just, just clarify. Hunliff, yeah, just, yeah, just, no, in, just have... in case this pet doesn't exist and it's something else. <laughs> yeah, no, I have like a hundred corrupted Casey. <laughs> That's well impressive, man. That is actually so impressive, dude. My God. Um, Thanks. Real, real quick on that, like, how how often do you complete a corrupted gauntlet? Is, is it like one for one, or like, is it a win? Tr like, is it one win, one loss? Like, how does it usually go? So, so. When I was learning it, it literally took me 100 tries to get a kill. Like, yeah. like 99 deaths, one KC. Damn. Exactly. And it took like four days. And, um, God, it was, it was terrible. Um, <laughs> it, I, I probably finished like one out of every three or four. Um, gauntlets. If if I'm like, if I have metronome on and I am not having any like music or sound in the background, and I have been playing for a couple hours, so my clicks are accurate and good, then I will get pretty consistent kills. Like probably sixty, seventy percent of the time, I'll get a KC. Yeah. Um. I went on a streak of like 12 kills in a row and then got pet on the, on the 12th and then God. freaked out and didn't go back until like a week later. But um, yeah, yeah, it, I feel like everything that is frustrating for most people in the game, it, it is like four times as long me i don't know if it's necessarily as hard because i do have the f keys figured out i do have like my way of clicking and playing and everything but 
it does take, I feel like, a long time to actually perfect and get shit down. Yeah. Yeah. That's that's why I'm so impressed because, like, when you were talking about 100 tries for your first Corrupted, I mean, that sounds like me doing Zora, you know, when I first started. It got so bad when I was doing Zora that I don't know if you guys know the streamer Tyler One back in the day, or not Tyler One. What the hell? What the, his name's Tyler. I'm talking about Aloha. Sorry. Oh, mm-hmm. uh, yeah. Child. Yeah, Aloha. He's actually streaming yeah. a bit uh, of Group Is he? Yeah, I saw him. I'll have to mm-hmm. check him out, man. But uh, we were pretty good friends. I met in real life. And apparently we were streaming at the same time doing Iron Man. And someone told him that uh, I was doing Zora. So he legit hosts me and then jumps into Discord. And while I'm failing, he's just laughing at me for an hour. And he's just roasting the shit out of me. And I still didn't get a kill. So I just, I don't know how you do it, man. Because I'm, I'm just absolute trash at PVM in this game. Well, well, I think it comes along with the aspect that that's my life. Like me learning to eat took four months. Like me relearning to like get up on my elbows, like readjust like I was doing a couple seconds ago. Like I took a year of like exercising and working out for like six hours a day. And like, I, I don't know. This shit's just hard for me. I'm just a hardcore ultimate Iron Man IRL. And <laughs> fucking... <laughs> It's just, I just got to work at it, you know, and then like it'll happen. It's just, you just got to put yourself in a position to fuck up and then don't fuck up. That's how I Dude, think of something always. I got a bit of a, I guess a little bit of like a personal question here for you. As of what you just spoke about, it takes you, it's taken you a long time to relearn how to do, you know, basic things. Have you ever worried about maybe like the balance between play and RuneScape? Because like there is so much in RuneScape to learn. You could probably fill your life or a good portion of it just spending time learning things in RuneScape. Do you ever have to like balance between playing the video game versus doing things for yourself? And does like that ever concern you that maybe you spend a bit too much time playing the game when you could be working on something else for your physical body? So, so right now, uh, it's interesting you ask that because right now I kind of like three or four months ago, I just like kind of broke out of this like depression, this like this kind of dark, sad state that I was in, and it wasn't like a concerning anything. It, I think it was just the fact that like I hadn't had time to actually be sad about my injury or kind of like process like what the fuck happened to me that like. At 15, my childhood and so many, like, high school, like, normal life, this, this, and this, uh, privacy to an extent, were all just, like, yanked out from under me, just ags fucking 73 dead deep wildy, man. And, um, so, uh, it took a while to come to terms with that, but I've actually, as of, a month ago, um, Rice, I don't know, maybe if you saw this on my Twitter, yeah, I've started going back to physical therapy. Yeah, yeah, you see um, improving a bit, right? Yeah, yeah, I, um, I'm definitely pretty out of shape <laughs> and definitely, definitely <laughs> gotta balance a bit more, um, touching grass with RuneScape, yeah, um, but that that's also kind of just going along with my life like runescape excluded that's just where my life is going and i'm just kind of coming out of that habit uh of like staying home um letting myself uh be lazy instead of like pushing myself through the uncomfortable days through the spasmy days through the painful days shit like that to maintain a state of normality where i can like I, I am uh, like up in my wheelchair every day where I am like maybe at one point streaming from my wheelchair, stuff like that. Yeah, that's awesome, fair enough. Man. Yeah. Um, so. Yeah. Uh, I, another personal question. You definitely don't have to answer this one, um, but you were saying you're making a lot of progress. You can move your wrist. You got your elbow on your bed. Is there any, any goals you're working on uh, as of lately? Um. Yeah, so right now, 
or I, I guess a little a little backstory so you kind of understand where I'm coming from. Three ish years ago, I had a bad pressure sore on my tailbone, which resulted in like a severe surgery, like part of my tailbone being shaved off and removed, part of it being infected. I had like a like a pretty open wound on on my backside, like this wide, this long. Hopefully that doesn't freak anybody out. I uh, don't picture that. Um, but it resulted in six to eight months recovery time on my stomach and I lost like 95% of my strength, independence. Um, I, I gained a bunch of pain from that. Uh, my nerve pain increased. My muscles tightened and like tendons shortened, stuff like that. So um, I'm coming out of uh, that like like that rock bottom area where I was literally face down in a bed 24-7, could not even feed myself, even though I physically could, I was like not allowed to be on my on my butt because I would like rip it open again. So ever since that happened, it was a huge eye opener, like, hey, you may like be disabled and you may have like a pretty normal life uh regardless uh of your disability but you do have to put in a very conscious effort to try more and like treat yourself better and uh like above like give above average care to yourself compared to the normal person and eat better sleep better um everything just be nice to yourself so to, to myself i'm speaking in the third person um, be nice to myself so that i can actually live a relatively normal life and uh, uh not and not uh i'm trying to think of the disadvantaged life because my life is great like i'm happy like i have great friends i have a great social life and i have a great like outlet for um our days a good coping mechanism that um, just like kind of lets me deal with stuff that I can't like physically release, physically mm -hmm. cope with. Um, and, and that's where the thought stops. That's where my brain farts out and I, I lose my train of thought. But uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hopefully that answered your question. Well, would you mind yeah. talking about this good coping mechanism for hard days that you have? Yeah, yeah. Um, so I am a uh, borderline personality disorder diagnosed with uh, EPD, and uh, a friend um, who isn't uh, like a part of my social circle anymore told me to just feel, just feel. And when it, that feeling gets overwhelming, um, start to start to think of something else. Because there, there does need to be a release of emotions, and you do need to, to properly process what's going on in your life, in your head, in your heart, whatever. Um, and you do need to actually like experience some of that to, to, to move on from it. But once it gets to a point of altering your life or disrupting your life to like a severe extent, like a bad day is a bad day, you know, everyone has bad days. But if it's a bad week that turns into a bad month, like you have to just change your your mindset to put positivity into your life. If that makes sense. Mm -hmm. To start even even if it feels wrong, like I um uh, I'm trying to think of a good example. Um like on my spasm days, uh, what I will do is when my legs are spasming a bunch, I know in the back of my mind that this is shit and it hurts like a bitch. But in 20 years, there's going to be some electronic stimulator that can connect my spinal cord 
and I'm going to need these spasms. I'm going to need this muscle tone because if I don't have muscles, I won't be able to walk in 20 years type of thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Wow. That's, that's yeah. awesome. That's yeah, a, that's a really good way of looking like, at it. Dude, to pull that from the pain that you're going through, like, that's, wow, that's insane. Do you know, that makes me think a little bit. Um, I remember a while back watching the Joe Rogan and um, Elon Musk podcast. I was going to bring and, that up, actually. <laughs> yeah, dude. Yeah. He, Elon Musk, he was talking about, um, oh, it's called like Neuro- Neuralink. Yeah, yeah. Neuralink, yeah. One. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and it, he was talking about how like people with dimension and stuff, like it's supposed to help. Like I, I don't know how it works. It's like brain surgery, but this chip it's, or um, something that they do, do. You know more about him, man? Uh, just uh, just a barely right because I am obsessed with Elon. He's the only guy who's rich that I like. Um, but he's they awesome. This, I, I love Elon, dude. They put I this really- little chip in your skull. And it helps transmit your brain like it, it's like an electro whatever it got wires in there and it'll send that to the rest of your body or it'll just kind of um, help that process where people have the, a struggle, you know, and it's super complex. Um, cool little fact, too, is uh, I don't know if you guys heard about the monkey playing mong, uh, pong with his mind. Have you guys heard about that story? No. So yeah, I heard about it. Th- did you? Yeah, there's there's a monkey that has the Neuralink chip and it has a little tube that feeds it strawberry shakes or banana milkshakes or whatever. And there's Pong. And every time he gets the Pong just right, he was playing with his hands at start. He gets a little bit of a milkshake. Well, they took away the controls and now it's just a tube and Pong and the monkey's controlling it with his mind and he gets rewarded every time he wins. And I mean, if that's happening, what? What else wow. could we actually come up with that might be able to help people in the future? Exactly. Um, there, there's actually something called an epidural stimulator, and it is like it's like a tiny catheter that goes up to the point of where your spinal cord was damaged, and it can provide like an electrical current to let nerve, uh, like let nerve communication go through. So there are people, um, like paraplegics. Um, and just paraplegic are people that have like leg paralysis, mm. only paralysis of like two limbs typically. Uh, quadriplegia, which is me, is just uh, paralysis or impairment of four limbs. So, just for everyone watching, if you don't know the difference, um, paraplegics are going through trials with epidural stimulators right now. And I personally know a, uh, a paraplegic, his name's Dustin. He, uh, he like stands, walks around for like four to eight hours a day, and then just like does his nightly routine in his chair, charges like literally charges himself every night. It's kind of kind of scary, but um, charges himself up every night and then can walk the next day. Wow, Fucking bro! Wild. It's the start of cyberpunk. I love that <laughs> game too, man. Oh, dude. <laughs> Are are there any technological advances you've been looking into that may be just on the like the brink, maybe a couple of years, maybe ten years, you know, that could help um, you out? Yeah, I mean that is slowly getting pushed into testing for quadriplegics. So I am trying to keep my body tip top shape and get <laughs> myself to a point where like maybe I could be one of those testers. Nice. Oh, yo, get in. Might as well. Exactly. Might exactly. Well. Yeah. Dude, your RuneScape game will go up tenfold too with some like robotic stuff going on. Yo. No, but it can't. See, I'm worried. I, I'm, I'm conflicted because what do I do with my Twitch name? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, no, just my you, hands. You just my it. real hands what? don't work. You know. <laughs> <laughs> You just be called metal hands now or something. You know, change sometimes. It. Call it the cyborg, you know? I'm like I lose my brand, you guys. Come on. Yeah, you gotta uh, rebrand like Facebook, dude. You just, just be called OSRS oh, twenty seventy seven or something, man. <laughs> mm-hmm. Damn. I, w- I would absolutely choose uh working hands uh over over my Twitch name. But yeah, no. Anyone wondering. I was gonna that's exactly what I was thinking. I was like, man, you can you can change the Twitch name, it's okay. Like, yeah, no. But it's like it, 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 this whole conversation, like it's something I've not thought about in a long time. Like, um, 
the only thing I personally have where I can kind of relate to feeling unable to be able to like physically walk around and stuff is uh, a few years ago I had like a knee operation, right? And it's insane how after having like a small little incident, like like you don't you don't think about this on a day to day basis. You're just walking around normally, but it's like something as small as your ankle, your knee, anything like that. If it goes bad. It can completely stop you in your tracks. And like, I, I wasn't able to walk without crutches for, I think it was like two weeks, you know? It, it's like not being able to do things just very simple. You gotta take good care of your body. But I think, you know, the whole Neurolink conversation we're having here and like future cyborg related sci fi talks, I love that because I think that, you know what? It's like, keep your mind healthy keep your mind and heart healthy they're two of the most important things in your entire body and like we are in an era right now where it's like crazy things are happening like mm -hmm. in 20 years time there realistically could be something out there that could literally change your life cam you know exactly. and I, I think i think that hope is like really really strong and i think that there's a decent chance that there will be something that comes up yeah i mean Fingers crossed, man. You see this? <laughs> <laughs> they don't stay yeah. crossed, but I mean, it counts. Hey, man, you know, all, you know every, counts, every five man. years, right? Like this kind of technology and like, you know, how far people can can advance in it. It's it's astronomical. So before Seriously, you know it. I was it, watching it. Yeah. I'm, I'm sorry. Keep going, man. Yeah. No, I'm just saying before you know it, right? Like all these things that we talk about now, like that are movies, like some of this could happen in five to ten years. I mean, you yeah. got people like Elon Musk really pushing it, you know? So as long as you have these people that are willing to invest the money, it, it can go far. Dude, so there's hope. Like, there's hope. I was watching there's that podcast hope. and Joe Rogan's like, so if someone has Neuralink and another person has Neuralink, when do you, like, they, they kind of compared it to iPhone patches. Every iPhone's like a better patch and something else works. It's like, would you be able to talk to someone in your brain Elon's like, uh, hypothetically, yeah, you should. He goes, what, how far do you think that's off? Like 20 years, 40 years? And Elon's like, five, five years. And I'm like, what the fuck, five years? You know how good it's going to be to pick up bitches with that, you know? you just like, hey, you know, it'd be so good. So I think we all have reasons we want to see technology kind of flourish. That's kind of mine. But, geez, just think, dude. Like, just your body uh, with the, with the neural link or whatever that happens. And also you could talk to people who far, like what if I just want to call racy and just boom, dude, I, I feel like this is a coward's way out. I'm trying to like <laughs> try, trying to chat a bird up and you don't want to get physically rejected. So you're just going to like fucking like mind transfer to that bitch. And she's just going to be like, hell the fuck. No. And you're going to be like, Oh, okay. And nobody Dude, knows. I'm more scared to <laughs> say that seems a bit intrusive. Hey. And if I constantly had people ding in my head, I would just rip the thing out. Dude. Fuck walking, dude. No, I'm Leave saying like alone. if she's walking by, you're just like, "What's up?" You know, or something oh, like dude, that. Mate, you're, you're gonna, you're gonna, mate, you're gonna end up in like the first cyborg prison or some shit, dude. It's gonna be like the new wolf wolf whistling. She just starts oh, sprinting gosh. at me with pepper spray and shit. <laughs> you got dude, the robot leg. She's going fast that, as shit. That sounds so creepy. Like, so she, a fit woman walks by and instead of like, you know, normally saying, "Hey, how you doing?" or whatever, you're you're thinking about doing this stalkerish thing where you're like. Hey, how you doing, girl? Like, just, for a fucking mind chip? That is the creepiest shit, yeah. dude. Just no. Super deep voice. Oh, oh. <laughs> but, like, why wouldn't you just do it with your own voice? <laughs> it fuck? just seems better. If you just, like, you hit her, she's looking like, oh, I also like man. looking at sales at Target. You know, it's what the fuck? It, it'd be great, man. <laughs> <laughs> My oh, job, hey, man. Just, I feel like I'm getting shit on, man. That's what I'm looking forward to, all right? Come on, five years, we got this. Digitized oh, think of brain, the, baby. <laughs> think, of, think of the DoorDash, the, the brain DoorDash. Let's think about the real real priorities. You can think, man, I want a burger. 15 minutes later, there will be a burger at your door. I hope <laughs> then we will, uh, and sorry for anyone working Uber or DoorDash, but it's too damn expensive. Hopefully you got drones flying that shit then, because oh, uh, I if, can't keep affording these tips, dude. I can't. It's like, 20 bucks for a burger? I can't do it. 
Yo, but what if you you were like thinking about it, but you didn't, you weren't like really sure you wanted it, but then they still processed it anyways. Yeah, no. How would they be sure? <laughs> you know, what that's mean? a good point. You would need to like I'm... virtually in, like in your mind be able to have some buttons you got a, that like yes, a forehead sure. fingerprint scanner. <laughs> <He's>... <laughs> Dude, uh, this, this whole conversation reminds me of a film. It's an old film. I think it's it, uh, God. Has it got Tom Hanks in it or? The guy that seems well, no, no it, it's called like the fifth sense or something. And if you got it, something basic, I'll tell you the concept real quick. Effectively, people are being arrested before committing a crime that they were going to do but hadn't done. Like they could look into the future, sort of thing. I think it's called like the fifth sense, and it's it's got that Tom something in who is like the Scientologist guy. Tom, uh, what's his name? Brad Pitt. No, I'm just kidding. Tom Cruise. No, uh, Tom Cruise. <laughs> yeah, that's that's the guy. I'm pretty sure he's in it. But like that makes like this whole conversation is making me think of like <laughs> if the if you're thinking I want I want KFC delivered and it just turns up and you pay for it like that, it's like bro, what happens if you just have one of those faults, you know, where you're like really pissed off with your neighbor or something? And you think, man, I want to go over there and beat the shit out of that guy, and then the next thing you know, the cops are at your door. And it's like, well, I wasn't gonna do it, like you know, chill. I don't, I don't know, man. We're, 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 it's a slippery slope. There you know, uh, so what are you saying, Cam? That's a funny thought for yeah. sure. Um, there, so, there would have to be some guidelines put in yeah. to uh, have that avoided. It would have to be confidential. That that that's it. Like it, only only the robots could listen in. That's it. <laughs> it would be bad, right? Because. I swear as a comedian, I can't think of his name, but he's like, don't you ever have those thoughts when you're driving where you just keep staying in the lane? It's a normal Friday night, but you just go, and then you're prison. Nah, prison. Nah, you just hit like nine people. You never have those thoughts? Or <laughs> like imagine yeah. you, you would just get arrested anytime you walk into a store and there's a semi-hot female and you just, your brain goes instantly. And then all of a sudden like the cops show up, you know? Oh, it no. Just, <laughs> it nah, just that's, be, yeah. that, that, that would be too hard. No, that, that, that would too hard. That wasn't Bill Burr by any chance, was it? Or it Bill was Murray? Bill Burr. There you I go. love, yes. dude. He's like my favorite comedian right now. That guy's absolutely hilarious, man. <laughs> Mass murderer, regular Friday. <laughs> um, so, speaking more about how you uh, were, were to cope and stuff, and um, before the podcast, we were talking about uh, weed and maybe how you're trying to get off the nicotine. Do you, would you like to share how that may have affected your life or when you started uh, dabbling into the marijuana? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so uh, before my injury, like I, I feel like I was like most school kids. I had like, uh, Oh, me and, me and my friend, uh, his older brother got like a, a little nug of weed and we're going <laughs> to go in the woods behind his house. And, trying to figure out how to smoke it like i'd done that like twice mm. and then i broke my neck um couldn't even eat and breathe on my own so like that wasn't uh, a concern or even a thought in my head but then my mom came to me and she said hey i've been doing some research this is supposed to help a lot with spasms and pain we started off with like cbd oil that had no thc and it didn't really do shit um and then I started reading up about it because I was just bored sitting in the hospital for hours on hours a day. And um, I like, convinced my mom to get some CBD, a heavy CBD oil with a tiny bit of THC, just enough to activate. And I slept for like 12 hours like, nice. for the first time in like three or four months. Like no spasms, no pain, just my nerve, my nerve pain, and like what I deal with when I spasm, um, it increases like in severity when I spasm. But it feels like when you just get pins and needles in, in your arm or hand after napping on it for too long, um, it is like two or three times that feeling, kind wow. of when when I spasm. Is, is what I would compare it to. So, um, it takes that from ends and needles down to like literally just nothing. 
this um like how how it feels when you hit your desk next to you, your like next to you that's how it feels to me when i hit my leg so instead of my brain um like giving me phantom pain and imagining my hand actually touching my leg with that pins and needles feeling i just feel nothing like my true paralysis could feel like or not feel like whatever the mm-hmm. right way to say it is but um from there i moved uh, i just kind of grew up i graduated high school went to college um oil became expensive and i didn't live with my mom anymore uh, i just started smoking regularly um and yeah i smoked probably um 10 to 15 times a day now and to cut that down to two to five is the goal and less than I want to do it before 2022 starts. Nice. Yeah, that's a good goal to go for, man. Um, and you were talking about earlier off the podcast, you were trying to uh, get off the nicotine. Um, yeah. I, <laughs> I've smoked cigarettes since I was 12. I, uh, I worked at my dad's car dealership in the back, like detailing cars and just kind of picked it up with the guys working back oh, there. Of course. Bro, yeah. That's, just, so, that's wild, man. Just, hey, that 12-year-old, dude, you want a little, you want a little fucking yeah. Malboro real quick, dude? Just pop one yeah. in. I so, mean, sorry. I, well, I was I just going to say, I partially missed the conversation because I went to the loo, but um, I came back to hear you say that smoking marijuana was helping you with your spasm pain. And um, yeah. I just, why are you planning to cut down on it then? Exactly, if it's helping. Because there, there's a, a better form that's, that's not as harmful to my lungs. Um, I can do like edibles and oils and stuff like that. And my hope is that with um, upping the amount of physical activity that I do, my spasms will go down some because they'll just be tired to, to not, uh, like just too tired to actually spasm. And, okay. um, Actually, real quick, uh, if it's all right, I am going to go uh, readjust and take a rip so I don't kick my monitor. Oh, okay. yeah, that sounds good. That sounds good. Two or three yep. minutes. Oh. No go problem, man. Yeah, go ahead. We'll mute and you can do your thing. I yeah. honestly would love to take a rip too, but I told myself no more mornings. It just, you just don't get anything done. You know, it's just. Oh, dude. I, you know, I've not, I've not touched weed. For God, I think it's been about two years now since like the whole COVID. Well, whenever the COVID thing started, I have not touched weed. Yeah, um, it was it was because like here in the UK, we had like the lockdown and like you, we weren't allowed. To, I wasn't allowed to see my mates. Like it was really, really strict. And where, where we were living, it's like I wasn't going to invite him around because like everybody's like looking out of their windows and like seeing what everyone's <laughs> up to kind of deal. So I was like, I'm not going to invite my friend around and we're not going to smoke weed. But um, I, I don't know about you boys. I, I know that you both don't have a problem with it, which is, I think, good, man. You know, peace and all, uh, all that love. There's but, no uh, peace, there's bro. It's no just peace. a good-ass time, man. I don't I mean, give a, a fuck about the hippies. <laughs> no, 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 no. But I'm saying, like, I'm, I'm putting it, like, I know that some people have a problem yeah. with weed. And, I, and, like, I don't really understand it personally but i don't really want to get into that because i know it's a bit political but i mm-hmm. will say like i used to do it a fair bit with my friend i own i'd only ever do it socially and i only ever have done it socially um but i'm kind of glad that i stopped doing it and it wasn't because it wasn't a quality time bro i had the best time and i would be yeah. very creative when i'd get high some of my some of my biggest like no shit some of my most successful youtube content has came from when i've been high and I've just been blazed, and I've been like, man, I think people would enjoy this concept. And then I've just done it, and people have enjoyed it. But um, I started to get really bad hangovers on weed. Like, mm. I would just be... Firstly, whenever I'd get high, I'm useless. Like, I'm just like, just feed me, 
let me play video games and have a good laugh with me. That's it. In terms of like doing anything productive, <laughs> no chance. No, and I, I was having I was having hangovers that were like a day and a half long, <laughs> where after I smoked, I would just feel like doing nothing. You know? Yeah. So um, mm -hmm. it kind of started to affect my my progress at work, kind of deal while on my YouTube series. So I I'm kind of glad that I don't do it as much now. Yeah, I feel that way as well. That's why, like, so I was a goody two shoes till I was like 21, right? I didn't drink. I didn't smoke. I didn't do anything. My uncle one time, like, sipped a thing in my beer and I got all scared. I was a big puss. But as soon as I had 21, that went out the window. You went YOLO, dude. Yeah, I went, I went a little hard. And there was like a whole year where I was just, you know, and just morning smoking. And those hangovers would last a while and you'd feel lazy and you'd be like, well, might as well smoke. I'm feeling lazy. And then it's just fucking a month goes by and two months goes by. <laughs> so now I got a rule. Don't smoke in the morning. You know, don't, even if you wake up, you feel like trash. Don't do it. Right. So You'll I don't feel even I don't more do trash. You feel uh -huh. tired. <laughs> you get nothing done. You literally yeah. get nothing done. Um, where was I going with this though? Uh, I, I don't know, man. <laughs> yeah, I, just... nah, I, I only smoked on the weekends, like, when I got into it during college, but, like, it was good for the weekends, because then it was, like, stress reliever, you know? And then you get, like, yeah. sick-ass, like, eight, ten hours sleep, you know, you wake up, you're like, yeah, well, I'm good, because, you you know, mm -hmm. you just had a good sleep, you know? Yeah. yeah that, was, that was really the only time I, I smoked consistently, was just, like, on the weekends. See, like, it's... It, it, sorry, go for it. I, I was just gonna say, it's, like... It's such it's a strange conversation because people have like a lot of things with, like against it. Where like I can imagine there are probably people listening to this podcast right now, hearing that we've all smoked weed and instantly being like put off by us saying that, right? And there are people like that. I know people. Yeah. I've known people like that. I, and it's like it's one of those things where when I started to smoke weed, I kind of like developed the the notion of. Don't knock it until you've tried it. You know what I mean? Yep. Because it's like, notion, isn't it? <laughs> don't knock it until you've tried it. Because like, it's for me, it was just a really good way to relax. When mm -hmm. I was like, when I did do it, I used to get up in my head and I was stressed all the time, and it would really just calm me down. You know, and it would make me feel good and I'd feel creative and like it would be a good way to unwind personally. And um, it was just a good time. Like, yeah. I, I have only good memories of it, and it wasn't until, like, towards the end of it that I started to even have anything slightly bad. But everybody's different, you know? Like, I know people get paranoid when they smoke yeah. it and stuff like that, and it's like, yeah, yeah. it's not for everybody, and I respect mm -hmm. that. It is what it is. I, I completely agree, dude. It's not for everybody, but I also have to say, I wouldn't want to watch a podcast if they didn't smoke weed at least once in their life. I'm not going to watch someone who's just always sober. No, I'm not. They, what what insight would they have? There's never like a great story that goes, I was drinking a glass of milk. No, no one wants <laughs> to listen to those guys. So find mm -hmm. your find your people who do some sort of drugs. You know, that's why I listen to Joe Rogan. He does all of them. Uh, <laughs> he does, he does a lot of them. Uh, welcome back, by the way. Mm -hmm. uh, we're just into the weed topic. Uh, Rice, do you mind if I share our little story that we had? When we uh, get yeah. Food? yeah, sure. So what was it? PAX East of boston we were in your buddy's house who i wasn't a huge fan of but that's not the point yeah. and he had something crazy i don't know what the hell he had it was definitely <laughs> weed and uh oh god so he's like you want to smoke and i'm like all right that sounds awesome and rice rice got all excited dude seeing rice yeah, high is like, like one of the so... <laughs> one of the few joys in life you got to see his ass high he's hilarious <laughs> so we smoke it and all of a sudden my vision turns purple <laughs> Oh, what the fuck? What the I'm hell? like, what is happening, bro? Why? Everything's like purple tinted. I don't know what's happening. Rice is just giggling. Yeah, and Rice I'm like, giggling. dude, dude well, we need to get food. Do, usually. And I got all excited. I'm like, bro, are we going to go hit those food stands downstairs? Yo, because they had like five in a row. So now, for some reason, we took the stairs. We were, what, five <laughs> or six floors up. And it was small like, stairs. No, it was only two floors, bro. Never take the stairs. Fuck Dude, stairs. It felt like five. And it was the worst thing because it would spiral oh around, God. but there was just a dead drop in the center. So I'm freaking the fuck out. I'm first. I'm like just slowly trying to wobble down. And Rice is like, hurry up, man. I'm hungry. And I'm like, don't rush my ass, dude. It could go bad. And 
10 minutes later, we get down there and I'm, I'm still freaking out, but we get all excited. We get our food. I got tacos. I think rice got a fish burrito. We get back upstairs. What was that show we were watching? The anime? Attack on um, Titan, maybe? I don't know. No, it was on Netflix. Uh, the the vampire... Uh, Castlevania, right? Castlevania? Oh, yeah. Uh, I was like, yo, try to watch this. <laughs> yo, Rice was like, dude, you gotta watch this shit, man. Come on, bro. Look at that. And every time action scene was, he's like, don't look at that shit. That shit is fire, bro. So I, I my remember tacos. that. Dude, I, I'm telling you, whatever this was, I was zoomed in. And... <laughs> Dude, I'm, I'm eating my fucking tacos. I'm having a great time. They're gone in like five minutes. Rice is eating a 40 minute long fish burrito. <laughs> and every two minutes he'd turn and go, you got to try some of this, dude. It's the best fish burrito. Dude, and he you put didn't it in finish my face. your food, bro. You didn't even finish No, I it. ate it all. I don't no, know. You, what didn't, dude, you didn't finish it. He was nibbling on his burrito like no, a rabbit. Dude, that, I had no, some. no, you didn't finish your food. I did. Dude, I, I, I had some of your burrito, but every two minutes, you're like, dude, try this burrito, bro. It's fucking good. And that's all I got. That's all I remember. But he was so ecstatic nah, see, about the my, show. I, what I remember was he didn't finish his food. Dude, I, I like, swear to God, I ate, I ate <laughs> all of it, man. It was no, so you, good. You did, you you did, did not did. finish the show. <laughs> Red <Rest laughs> zoned out when you guys, 15 minutes after you guys back up, got back upstairs. <laughs> He did. We were just sitting there. I didn't know what was going on. I was just watching and just, mm-hmm. yeah, just burrito. Um, like, <laughs> but but I want to go back because I still had my headphone in when uh, uh when I took my break. Um, I I heard everything that was said, and there is. I, I just want to say there is like a big political thing, uh, with like if you smoke, if you don't smoke, if you are okay with weed, if you're not. And personally, obviously, I'm for it, but I live in a state full of of Mormons. I live in Utah. Oh, Utah. And and they are very not for it. A, a lot of them. Yeah, and it, it 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 just kind of just blows my mind that thing is that is essentially the same thing as beer or a cigarette or a Vicodin. Um is like so frowned upon just because it's not completely regulated dude i could go super deep i probably shouldn't but i just gotta say in my opinion be weed is much better for you than beer i mean sure if you smoke it it does harm your lungs but you could you could take you know eat those fucking edibles if you want uh way better than a vicodin don't even get me started about some of my relatives who may or may not have been addicted to certain pills because they went to the hospital once and i mean you just got to go once and that's all they do i mean Yep. The drug yeah. companies, how do they make all their money? You think these people need these pills? No, they, they make it because they're addictive, right? But this is not what the podcast is about. I go very... Yeah, yeah. yeah. There's, there's, there's a lot of bullshit in that, in that yes. type of, you know, yeah, it cool. mm. I think um, probably one of the biggest things for weed that, like, stands out for me, and for me, this is just, like, a sol- this is, like, the the cement reason why... I guess I'd say I'm for weed, even if it were to come down to like, I wouldn't debate it. If somebody wanted to debate it, I'd just be like, okay, dude, you have a nice day. But like, if you take a dude that's high on weed, you take two guys, it's like they're smoking weed. It's like they are the least likely like to go out and get into trouble, dude. It's like, if you smoke weed, you don't want to do anything. You know, it's, you just want to chill out. It's like, whereas mm-hmm. if you've got two guys and you, you're on the beers, that fucking, that gets you ready. You're like ready to go and like burst mm-hmm. some energy, like either whether that be on the dance floor, go out on the town, like, and you know, it's like, it's two very different vibes, but it's like, dude, you're never gonna fucking get somebody high on just weed that's out looking for trouble. Or, like, if you do, it really is, like, a fucking anomaly. Do you know what I mean? It's like... Dude, it's most purely that just... person. That's just the troublemaker at that yeah. point. But I still it, think they won't even, like, what, you see them on the street begging for chips? I mean, like... Yeah, what, it's just what like... What would they go, be up like, to? They'd probably go out looking for a fight, and then, like, midway through, they're just like, ah, I can't be fucked. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go back and watch some anime. You know? it just it, It's just one of those things that chills you out. I don't think, um, like, there's a whole load of stuff around that isn't there with, like, alcohol. People compare it to alcohol the most, I feel. Which is and weird. I, I think, yeah, 
I, I think it is, but like they're vastly different. It's it's just one of those things you can't throw everything into the same category because I, I feel like that's what's happened with weed, right? It's kind of just been thrown in with like heroin and crack. <laughs> it's like it's, it's, it's been not. A while. I, I'd say for at least for a while, you know, and maybe in some places still. Yeah, like like I've I've referred to weed as a drug uh, this whole call, but for me it's a medicine. You know, like. When I say, hey, can I get a hit? It's, hey, let me get relief. Let me get less pain. Let me get, um, like, avoidance of the, kind of the hell that I'm sitting in, you know? Um, mm-hmm. So I think anyone that looks up, like, one of those feel-good Facebook videos of, like, the six-year-old with seizures, and then they have a little bit of weed oil, and they're good for, like, two days, I think that should be, like, approval for a medicinal standpoint. It, from 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 me, I I don't care about what people uh, think of my political opinion, but I I uh, yeah I I, I do think it's kind of wild that the medicinal outlook is uh it, like the medicinal medicinal advantages are completely overlooked for just dumb reasons. No, I I was legit gonna bring up those videos because my family drinkers not smokers and i'm not saying heavy drinkers or anything just american drinkers you know how we do uh and yeah it's like how could you even have a different opinion and there's nothing wrong with having a different opinion but when you watch a video of a girl who just is constantly spasming and stuff and she just gets a a little hit of the thc and she's just chill and relaxing how could you watch something like that and not think okay maybe it is a good thing goes from not being able to speak because of like jaw shakes to fluid like good communication with no issue like it's it's beautiful to see it's great it's it's like awesome to experience but also it it, it does kind of feel bad every now and then it's like oh man why i why isn't there just like a a universal like agreed upon method that's that's morally but I mean, it's, yeah. it's yeah. a it's world getting, that's think, never, it's I, never going to exist for anything. I think you know? it's getting there, you know, in terms of like, at least in the States, you know, it's getting there. Like people are, you know, starting to accept them more and more conservative states Definitely. obviously will take the longest to uh, convince. But I think the yeah. shift is towards that. Yeah. Towards the acceptance Definitely. of that. Because like alcohols, like it's taxed, just like weeds taxed in certain states. And like just back to those videos, you never see uh, the girl shake and all of a sudden a dude cracks open a Bud Light and she's good, right? That just never <laughs> happens. It's it's yeah. it's there, there's a reason why they're on THC gas. And I wasn't gonna say this. A very short explanation of why I think people are against weed is back in the day, Colombia, and you know, you see the narcos on Netflix and stuff. That was all very real at the time. And money was constantly smuggled out of the USA and drugs were brought in. And what happens when the USA loses money to another country? They declare war. And that's what the war on drugs was. And weed was one of the things they would import. So it was under the category of drugs. And it was constantly promoted as drugs are bad, weed is bad, cocaine is bad, all of it the same. And then what was there was like this program in school called D.A.R.E. And they, they, they shared the same message. And we all grew up with that. And they grew up with that and older people grew up with that. And so this, this message is ingrained from possibly the government. And that, that might be the reason why people are like, oh, yeah, I hate weed. It's bad. Um, why? It's like, oh, well, I just remember it that way. You know, I grew up that way. <laughs> <laughs> See? They're one of the <laughs> dumbest fucking programs. Sorry, Dare. I mean, sure, teach, teach it. I'm going to stop. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm a stop. Oh yeah, there's there's a whole lot of reasons, you know. In Asia, they got like the opium wars and stuff, you know, and, and there's yeah. a strong association with weed and you know opium of the past. So you know, there's just a lot of reasons, h- historical, you know, that really. Uh, another quick one is, um, Harrison Ford, uh, um, was. Making a shit ton of not Harrison Ford, Henry Ford, Jesus, Henry Ford um, was making a bunch of money uh, making cars and shit, and then they found out that hemp metal is stronger than steel, and also way more cost effective pro- to produce. But um, then it, it made Henry Ford 
less money and his politician buddies were like, hey, no, we can't have that happen. So, uh, yeah, we we not legal. Isn't that always the case? The politician buddies, man. Um, to bring this conversation to a happier note, maybe on weed. <laughs> does everyone have a, a fun story? Uh, Cam, do you, you ever have something you're just having a giggle fest or you're watching a good show? Or is it just solely just to get rid of that pain? Um, yeah, I mean, there's there, there's like the countless uh, experiences of like me and a couple buddies hanging out uh, late at night, uh, just playing like a split screen game or something, just laughing about just something stupid that a buddy said that just sounded goofy. And mm-hmm. we laughed for five, ten minutes about the one thing that <laughs> we would never consider laughing about while not high. But yeah, I mean, at, at this point, it's it's pretty strictly a a, a pain release for me. Gotcha, yeah. gotcha. Mario but, um, Party is amazing, by the way. When that on that night, <laughs> it's a oh good yeah, game. no, for sure. <laughs> for sure. Um, uh, Tom, do you like you said you were a smoker? Do you got any? Uh, <laughs> stories you want to share it now I, dude, I, got, it I got too many stories man. <laughs> you don't got one that just sticks out i i was just i was just thinking about this um this one time in amsterdam with my mates <laughs> we, we used to go to amsterdam like quite a lot <laughs> we made it like a yearly tradition for a while and uh this one year we decided that we were gonna rent out a boat to go down the canals right and uh, we ended up finding like a really cheap website that was hiring a boat, and it was literally like it was basically a bathtub with a motor on the back of it. Like I'm not kidding. And um, this was this was like I think how many was it? I think it was there. There's four of us in total, right? And we're going along the canals, and we are just high out of our minds. We're like going along, smoking as we're going down the canals. And um, this was at a time when I had like a YouTube channel for Pokemon cards and opening oh, Pokemon yeah. cards. And um, so the whole thing was we were going to get high, open Pokemon cards on the boat in the canals in Amsterdam. <laughs> oh, and uh, no, okay. did it. We shot it. We filmed it. But it was just, it was so bad. <laughs> <laughs> like it was unwatchable and like we just we all watched it later when we were sober and we were just like if we put that on the internet we will never get a job in real life we'll never recover <laughs> like, we were like we cannot upload this video and I, I don't know what ever happened to it but I know it was absolutely horrendous um, but yeah I, I remember this I, I remember this one time I was living uh, in my flat uh, this is my last flat. I lived there with a few mates, and it was like a really blistering summer's day, and it got really hot where my computer was. This was like back when we did the podcast, maybe two, maybe three years ago. I was like under the stairs, if you remember that. Yeah, I remember the Harry Potter about- time. Yeah. Yeah. So um, it was really hot, and one of my housemates, there was one window in that entire room, and one of them opened it up, like doing me a favor because it was hot. And uh, I remember I got high, and. Uh, I was playing with my friend, I was playing League of Legends, I had my headset on, and I, I get really loud sometimes. Like, really loud, especially when I'm high, because I'm just laughing my ass off, having a good time. And, um, my friend was like, he was like, mate, he's like, can you hear that? I was like, no, I was, I was like, what are you on about, mate? Like, I'm high as fuck, I'm like, what the fuck are you on about? And he's like, mate, he's like, I think there's someone screaming at you right now. And I'm like, what? And I'm like, take my headphone off like this. And I just hear this lady outside the window yeah. <laughs> screaming, screaming at me. She's like, like what? And blinding. She's like, swearing at me, going mad. <laughs> and I'm like, I'm so, I'm so high. I'm talking to my friend. I'm like, mate, she's yelling at me. And I hear her go, yo, yeah, I'm fucking yelling at you. And I go and crazy. <laughs> and I literally got up, went over to the window. Like, I was laughing hysterically. <laughs> I just closed it. What the fuck? <laughs> And I'm like, I, went, I went back to gaming, but I, I'll never forget my friend was just like, man, he was like, I thought you were about to get stabbed or something. <laughs> mm-hmm. 
I, silly times. Silly times. We're, we're more funny. grown up nowadays. We don't do that. Bro, I'm going to have to go to Amsterdam with you one day, dude. Yeah. I, would I, was, mate, I, was just, I was just thinking, if you and Ree ever come to RuneFest, I'm totally down for after RuneFest, because Amsterdam's like only like an hour away by flight, and it's cheap. Very yeah. cheap. Mm -hmm. I'd be so down to go over there with you guys, and we could like do a... We could do like a high Amsterdam cafe podcast. Imagine uh -huh. that. Dude. That would be sick, dude. I say we That'd lock it in for next That'd year, man. For sure. yeah. Yo, Cam, you're yeah. welcome to come if you come to RuneFest, man. We'll do a uh, four is, podcast is again. RuneFest? The UK. Uh, yeah, it's, it's a bit it's a, it's far. A it's a hike. For us like, Americans, dude. Yeah. Uh, unfortunately, Europe is not very handicap accessible. Mm. The Europeans... Uh, construction workers were a bit ableist back in the day and uh -huh. that's totally fine no hard feelings yeah. but i don't think i can go very many places in europe mm -hmm. it's uh yeah the our our history we i think legit just the last maybe 20 to 50 years have have been kind to the disabled sadly it's just just everywhere history just been really bad i mean mm -hmm. <laughs> It's just horrible. It's kind of wild with with my injury specifically C four C five. Um, if if that happened in like the seventies or like the eighties, I might have, I would like almost for sure be dead. Like mm -hmm. probably not, definitely not where I am right now. Like for sure, I would be in a bed, like getting spoon fed everything, yeah. and yeah, I'm just. I mean, yeah. I'd, Obviously, being dis disabled, shit. But I, I, I chose a great time to be disabled. You know, <laughs> yeah. It's, it's really a good way to think about it, man. Um, just this time zone in, in general. I think we all kind of underestimate how crazy life is right now. Technology and just all these um, uh, equality going around too. I mean, we have a lot to work towards, but it's much better than even ten to twenty years ago. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah. man. This is like. We are so unbelievably lucky to be alive at this time right now. And I, I know there's like a ton of negativity going around, but I, I feel like just a little comparison. It's like when one of the worst things about your day is the fact that the, the online video game that you enjoy aren't doing the right thing or making the right decisions. You know, that's a, that's a pretty good example of how that's life's not too bad. That's yeah, a great place yeah. to be, man. Mm -hmm. That's a great place to be. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um speaking about RuneScape by the way, even though I'm loving the weed topic, uh do you guys want to jump into a little bit of leagues since it uh since some news has just came out about leagues? Yep. Before we before we do if I may, quickly, okay. just just something I would like to on the high conversation. <laughs> um have any of you guys ever had a kind of like outer bodily experience on drugs or maybe some kind of like strange trip or maybe like you've i don't know just ha had something interesting happening no, you have an out of body not out of bodily right because i've not shit yeah. myself high but i got close uh <laughs> nah, i don't think so because i I've only ever had weed so the yeah worst um, that could happen is that you take a little too much and then like your head throbbing and like things start changing colors you know that well i'm deal. not that's about it I'm kind of horrible at weed. I know there's like these people who go really into science of it, but I heard like there are, oh man, with psy psychopsychotic images or like if you take something and it, it's got like, you can't hallucinate on weed, but you got to take the right stuff. And I don't think I've ever taken the right stuff, but I have looked at the ceiling once and saw like little like faces and it was kind of cool, man. I was just weed looking, I was like, oh, it's Batman and, you know, just chilling there for like an hour. Weed but, is technically a, a hallucinogen. Actually, in the like the uh, drug classification table. Yeah, it's sometimes technically... your, the colors that you see changes. Yeah, mm -hmm. I remember I took too much. Everything looked red because, <laughs> like, red. I started feeling it's... a little scared, and I was like, "Oh no!" And then you know, it started happening. I'm like, "Oh no, everything's red." <laughs> like that. So how how open can I be um, on this podcast? Because I do have a mushrooms experience that was like, "Yo, send it." Um, <laughs> I don't think anyone is ever going to be like, oh, dude, this man's smashing mushrooms. Fucking shit. No, no fucking, yeah, yeah, I, I'm no, actually in a mushroom yeah. stock right now. MNMD. So I, I, <laughs> I haven't done it yet, but I believe in the future of it. So, um, yeah. So 
Uh, I unfortunately cannot do shrooms anymore because of one of the anti-spasm meds I'm on. I figured out the hard way that they kind of, uh, they mix to make a, a poison that, um, like, I, I got really lucky with the scenario. I only took a half gram of mushrooms, and I just had a really bad fever and really bad spasms for, like, the duration of the trip. But during that trip, everything kind of seemed like, um, kind of like zoomed out. If that if that makes sense, I um I ended up getting like a really bad fever. Um, I spasms were like shaking almost constantly, and I had a washcloth, like a wet washcloth, on my head, and a fan pointed at me, and I was just thinking to myself. Just like keep breathing, like you just need oxygen. And then, like, I blinked, and like the ceiling was like three or four times like further away. And I oh, felt like I was just God. like falling like into the bed. Oh. And then one of my buddies, uh, who is like holding my feet up because that helps with blood pressure, it brings blood to my head. Um, he like taps me, he was like, Yo, Cam. You're swallowing your tongue. <laughs> Focus. <laughs> Breathe. And, and I kind of like snapped out of it. And then like the ceiling came back like to where it was supposed oh, to be. Oh my God. Like, <laughs> it, was, uh, it, was, it was a unique experience for sure. Very, very bittersweet. Very scary. Very fun. Very um, glad it happened. I'm not going to do it again for fucking sure. Uh, <laughs> So many, so many like experiences oh and goodness. like emotions in like a six to eight hour period, but I, I got, I, I got really lucky with it. Um, and I opened my eyes to the drug use with my injury a lot because I am a fan of hallucinogens. Like I support whoever takes or supports them and it can be good for mental health. I think I've seen from personal experiences with me seeing like a buddy like microdose mushrooms for a week and he like his performance at work is better and he like is like more alert when hanging out with me and he like actually makes it to the gym every day type of thing so like there are benefits to like microdosing shrooms and stuff so in my head i'm thinking oh a natural drug uh the earth makes it i'll be good but no um, it counteracts with aclofen is the drug that I'm on to make a lethal poison and Jeez. there are other quadriplegics in my same scenario that like had to relearn how to breathe and talk because of taking a normal dose of mushrooms and just like having a normal trip they think and then they fuck their lives all over wow. again that's Jesus, just yeah, unfortunate, it has man. a lot of neurological effects, like profound effects. Yeah. Well, I think it's just because of the the medication. Because, um, mm. like, so after your trip, did you? So, I, I've been doing research. I've never done it before, uh, but they say a certain type, maybe most, uh, but just to s- specify one, so psilocybin uh, research, where depression, people who are depressed, go and they take it. And they do micro dosing or whatever. And it's, they honestly say this is better than therapy. This is better. That I feel great after even the first take, right? Not to mention like a couple, they go back. Um, did you, did you feel like any, anything or is it because the medication may have ruined that trip for you? Or did you feel a little better at the end of that? Um, so like, The first five, four or five hours of the trip, I was like, trying to figure out what the fuck is wrong with me. Like, this is not normal. Like, I should not be, like, experiencing this. Like, am I just, like, allergic to shrooms? What's the problem? Blah, blah, blah. But it, I just ended up Googling quadriplegic on shrooms. um, And I saw this YouTube video of this guy who was like, like the first five seconds of the video was 
if you are debating doing shrooms as a quadriplegic, do not. And I'm mid trip, and I watch that, and I'm like, Oh no! <laughs> oh no! Uh, That's gonna. What do I do? Oh no! I, I I already did the thing he told me not to do. What do I do? I'm oh fuck. Yeah. Oh <laughs> so, God, no. So I was freaking out a bit. Um, oh, but then I I did a bit more reading into it. Um, and figured out that yeah, I uh, can't mix those, and if I ever want to do that. Or experience like psilocybin or uh, mushrooms or anything like that. I'm gonna have to be completely detoxed from baclofen, but I don't really see a huge benefit to tripping like once a year, or twice a year, when I could just like not have them consistently. Mm-hmm. I feel like I have a good enough grip on my mental health and can cope and release emotions healthily enough that I don't really need that experience however i have a couple friends that definitely do like need it and it's that's like their way of coping is every like three to four months they'll just have a have a night of shrooms or a night of acid and they just kind of think about everything think about life reflect on what the fuck is going on yeah i think um when it comes to like getting high and smoking weed I, I don't know about you guys, but for me, I personally do it. Well, I always do it in company, and I always do it in company that I feel safe with. And I always like, you know, I do it with my best friend, and that's more or less it. And then a few of my other friends, where I can be completely open myself. But the topic that I absolutely love discussing when I'm high, space, man, space. <laughs> you, know? you like discussing that sober too, don't you? Uh, oh, I love it, Yo, dude. A it, high space it, stream. <laughs> Oh, bro! We gotta oh, you are. Oh, we gotta work to it. That would be amazing, man. If we can it, get, we, we we should get solo mission on because solo mission was tutored by Brian Cox, and I'm sure solo mission must have picked something up for Brian Cox, man. Like, come on, your tutor is like the master of the universe. Like, he must have an inkling about space, and we'll just we'll get high. Of a good sign. We'll take him to Amsterdam with us. Yo, what if we're great. high and then we just look at him and his neck just starts growing, dude? Oh, you know, it just starts just growing. Like, on his neck, you just see his face like sprouting out everywhere, just like, oh, oh, oh god, no. god, man. I'd be I down. miss I miss mm. those talks, but like, here, here's the thing. Even though I don't get high anymore, I, me and my best friend, we talk about space almost on a daily basis, like. Just we just love it. I think it's so interesting, and I think the thing is, when you're high, it makes you just more curious, and like you you like to understand things. And I think that where you're also very like intoxicated and a little slower than normal, sometimes things seem a little bit more interesting than they actually are. Mm-hmm. But like you know, hey, that's, that's not to discredit space because you're beautiful and it's interesting as fuck. Like think about the fact that we're on like opposite sides of the earth right now, boys. You guys might be at the bottom. I'm at the top. Who knows? You know, maybe we're like west to south. Like I don't know. There is no bottom or top in space. No, That's exactly. Also kind of like, crazy, isn't it? Yeah. It's fuck. It's fucking weird, isn't it? You know, it like the whole weird. thing's crazy. And it, dude, this is probably one of the. And I love space. And I'll quickly say this. I'm sorry for my tangents, rice cup. But here's the thing. <laughs> I think. I think that the average person, okay, has so much shit going on in their lives where. They just don't have a fuck to give about space because it's so far disconnected from their daily concerns, like trying to make ends meet. You know, it's like they they never think about it. And I I, I just love to think about it. And it Mm -hmm. fills me with joy. Like, I love it. Like, I just I truly enjoy the conversations that come from it. If you were to like get a ticket and you could travel to space on one of Jeff Bezos' rockets, would you would you accept that? I dude, I actually had this exact conversation a few days ago with my with my mate, and um, we were talking about with space travel. Eventually, it will become accessible to everybody, and it should do for a very smaller fraction of the price of what it is right now. It's exactly the same thing with flying. When flying was a thing to begin with. It was only super rich people and celebrities that could do it, you know, whereas you look at it now, like you can get on a plane for like $20 to some places. Um, but here, here's the thing. I 
would do it, but I would rather do it when it was at a point of space exploration. Isn't just a case of like popping up and being floating around for a little bit. I, yeah, I'm not entirely sure. What, yeah. I, I I'm not really interested in that. But when it gets to a point where it's like, hey, you can get on the plane or whatever it is, and we're gonna take you to the fucking moon and back or whatever, I'd be like, hell yeah. That so you want to go good. deep. You want to go deep well, and just. Well, you might as well get your money. Yeah, of My course. My God, you got I mean, the <laughs> ball. All right, you know, when they have that, I want to see your ass go deep then. Uh, I am dude, not I'll, leaving Earth. I would that is love crazy. to. I would I mean, love like, to. The hardest part is is giving a pe- uh, you know the uh, the average person a reason why they should go to space. Because like right now, you go to space and then you go back down. That's it. You know, it's kind of pointless. Well, there's no yeah. reason to have a cruise, but white people love that shit, right? Well, so, but there's know. things to do in the cruise, though. You know, right? Yeah, there's yeah, a beer pong. Well, well, yeah, space whereas, pong. whereas if you go to space, you just go to space, then you go back, right? So, like, yeah, I think just, it needs. Uh, need, just, sorry, yeah. What are you saying? Oh, you're just buckled in the whole time. Yeah, yeah. Like, I think it needs to get to a point where somehow miraculously you can build some, like, you know, like some, I don't know, attractions mm-hmm. out there, right? And yeah. people can go there. To like you know have fun there and come back right because that then it becomes like a tourist reason right and, i can and, see that and, and that's yeah. that's i i think that's the only way because otherwise you, you it'll just be like just to experience going to space and then come back you know like that, it doesn't sell that's yeah. what i was gonna it say sell. it's it's yeah. like either a rich person flex right now like oh i've been to space or like you got to be doing some shit up there like yeah, why are exactly. you going up there oh uh, go yeah, so, no that's what that's what Jeff what? Bezos does to feel better than Elon. Because he doesn't have hair. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly, dude. I, I know we're way off the subject of RuneScape right now, but like, I love this conversation, right? So what the reason me and my friend were having this conversation in the first place was because some noble prince from my country, I don't know if it was Prince Philip, I have no idea, I don't really care about that stuff, but he basically was in the media because he was saying that before we make space tourism a thing we should save the planet and we should sort poverty out and stuff like that which is like that's a big conversation to be having right it's like the argument against space exploration for fixing our own planet and i know that everybody stands differently on this but like just an observation we have had the money and means to effectively eliminate poverty in other countries for a very long time now, but we just haven't done it, right? It, it to me just it seems like a pointless argument. But I, I don't know how you guys feel on that. I mean, look at the American military; they're getting trillions of dollars when they're not doing shit, really. <laughs> Boys, I love yeah, it. Yeah, but yeah. I think we should probably <laughs> another day. Another Cut it day. in, I'll, bro. I'll stop it there. I'll stop it there. Y'all don't, you don't want me to go on a tangent, man. Yeah, I won't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, not... I will. I, I will just say one thing, and I truly believe this. I, I feel like. With that argument of like trying to save for save Earth and trying to you know say for example, uh, children families that live in Africa that are in absolutely terrible poverty, trying to get them to a point where you know they're to a basic level of human needs, it's like well maybe consider that there might be something in space that can actually contribute to that you know, and it's not just a waste of time. And I, I feel like that really is something that the people who argue about it, they, they just don't see any reason for it. You know, it, it's like maybe they haven't fall by it to the point where it's like, well, you could actually get resources from space or something like that. But that's all I'll say on it. And, yeah, and I need to I need to clarify my military comment because it, it sounds a bit insensitive to military members and families. Because what they do is 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 heroic, and obviously I could not do it mentally or physically, but it, it the it was more so just like the at what spending. the government where yeah where the government is putting money. It was not directed at any military members or anything like that. I just I wanted to clarify. Ninety, if not a hundred percent of the people who look at what the government spending money on would probably go why. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> I don't no, want to talk about 100%. it, but I think yeah, no, I don't even sure. think it's political. We're like, stop spending money on shit, man. It's our money. Get on our health care and education, man. Yeah. You know, a bit more on that. Oh, but, man, don't no, even speak, get me started on health care. It's, it's very complicated. Speaking <laughs> about Africa, though, um, they're actually, they're not like 
doing as great as they could be, but they're starting to get schools and, you know, you got, you got a, a lot of trading going through and uh, unbanked are getting banked through actually crypto, but we'll never talk about that ever again. But it's, it's actually pretty cool what's going on in Africa right now. I'm not sure how, how space could interact with that. I actually have been learning a lot about like space wise, how they have plans to build things in space due to the zero gravity, like, uh, you know, how people need uh, body parts and transplants and they can't make that on earth because just, yep. you know, you just, uh. they need to actually have the gravity to build such intricate things. So space, space is literally like the new gold rush. Uh, for a lot of companies, and sadly, NASA gotta love NASA, but it's government funded. It's probably not going to bring us super close to space. It's probably going to have to be just like the gold rush. Money makes people do things. Yep. So we we could be seeing that next kind of rush to space just just for the money and just for uh, evolution. Man, very interesting. I wonder if there are any like medical advances or like bonuses to like physical therapy with zero gravity or stuff like that. <laughs> Maybe. I, I mean, heard that I it's probably the opposite. Because <laughs> astronauts got to like work out and, and, and they lose muscle mass still. Yeah. Maybe. Mm-hmm. I don't yeah. know. I mean, it, it's quite interesting when astronauts come back from space, if they've been up there for a long time. Um, or sorry, let's start again. So before they go to space and they go up on the space station, when they have their suits made, they're usually made like a couple inches bigger than what they actually are. Because when they're in space, because there's no gravity, uh, they actually expand. So they actually grow, and they can grow up to like a couple of, I don't know how much, like say if you're like five foot eight, you could be like six foot by the time you come back, depending on how long you're up there for, because there's no gravity. And then when you get back on Earth, basically like, I don't know how it works technically, but it's something to do with the spinal cord. And um, basically the gaps get smaller when you come back to gravity. And then they shrink back down to what their usual size is. Oh, that's a damn shame. I was going to say, what else lengthens in space? And uh, does is that permanent? Because uh, <laughs> <laughs> could be a good one there. Yeah. Um, but we should probably wrap up with leagues. Uh, I'd imagine that'd be a good wrap up point. So uh, Rice is in the bathroom. He'll be back. Uh, what do you guys think about them delaying leagues till January? Does that interfere with your plans at all? Um, Rixie, you want to start or me? You go first, mate. All right. Um, I uh, personally wasn't planning on playing leagues until they delayed it. I was just going to focus group Iron Man and keep grinding Inferno. But um, I think the goal is just enjoy group iron, get done what I can get done, maybe get to a place where I can AFK some stuff and then enjoy leagues. Um, in terms of like what I'm doing with leagues, I have no idea. I It's boosted XP. That's literally all I know and what you what we've discussed today. Mm. So I'm, I'm quite excited to kind of dive into it, experience it, uh, kind of feel like a noob again. And... Um, yeah, no, I think it's going to be really fun. I'm kind of happy they delayed it, but I also, like, I I didn't need to schedule it yeah. later in the first place. A lot of common sense lack in there, in my opinion. Yeah. It's like, okay. Um, Racy, what do you got for these? Yeah, I'm more or less the same as Cam, um, and I don't know if I'm going to play it yet either. To be honest with you, I wasn't planning on playing it, but because it's pushed back now, I may end up playing it. Um, I, I think for me, like the thing that I, I don't really have anything good to say here. Okay, so I'm trying to like word this nicely, but like I think the thing which is, I would say, the most harmful of the situation is like here. Here's the reality. It's supposed to be in two weeks' time. People have given notice at their jobs in real life to take that time off, to commit to playing the game mode, and they've given two weeks' notice from it starting to say, we're no longer going to be doing it, right? And I just see that as just, like, that's just... That's gross, just, like, that's yeah. terrible. You know, I, that I, I just feel so bad for the people that took time off of work. And they probably won't be able to get that back and go back to work on those days. Like, I think that's terrible. It's too short to know us. I, that's something that I 
didn't even really think of considering i mean like i don't have a job and everything um but i think it's definitely pretty insensitive on jagex's part um but i i mean as someone who doesn't work and whose like opinion it doesn't really have a huge uh a huge amount of backing um i feel like there are uh, like we were saying earlier getting mad about or getting upset about um your game that you play on the daily delaying uh, an update is probably a great place to be yeah yeah <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> like, I'll, I'll, we'll go back to that. I love that. <laughs> uh, do you do you want? Like, I mean, I, I could I could definitely make this about me, and I could say you can walk to your computer and be mad about <laughs> leagues being delayed, or you can just wait and just do other shit. Yeah. Obviously, it's an inconvenience and is probably uh, scuffing up some people's work schedules, and I'm sure for some people. It, it will definitely uh, complicate finances, and and that's something that is is a fuck up on Jagex's part. I think that like maybe some maybe some players are are living month to month, you know, and they they planned out uh, being able to to work um, like after the week of leagues release or something, and maybe there is a financial gain. Maybe they stream a little bit. And they were expecting financial compensation from that, and now they're not going to have content to stream, type of thing. So I I kind of understand that, but like back to the first point, like you're upset about a, a game update in the comfort of your home, uh, and and fed, and you're wiping your own ass every morning. Yeah, yeah, that I I agree with both of you guys. It's it's definitely like not a huge deal, but there still is a bunch. And I, I just, I don't think it's the J mods. It's gotta be top tier because some of these things like the, the timing almost seems so common sense that the J mods couldn't have been behind it. Right. It almost feels like some dude doesn't know anything about video games. It's like, I oh, agree. we'll just time them all up in a row. And then, Oh, y'all will just, Oh, we'll move this back to where next is coming out. And just, it's like, do you understand how sweaty our, our people are? They want to do everything. They want to play all the games. They want to get all this content out. They want to, but it, it just seems a little ignorant, but honestly not a big deal. And because they're delaying it, I'm probably going to be playing, which I'm very excited. I did not want to grind at the end of this year, but start of next year. I'm so down. I am so down to grind leagues so for me it does work perfectly and i'm very happy but for those who did take time out of their work or are, are just their schedules messed up hey i'm sorry man it's jagex for some reason their timing not the jmods probably i'm saying probably because i don't know but the timing lately has just been horrible uh but yeah right so you came back to us talking about leagues how do you feel about the delay right now uh well i'm not a fan of the fact that it's like two and a half months should have been like two to two weeks, maybe a month, you know, just because the the whole idea is to not stack too many things at once. But like that doesn't solve it if you move it two and a half months where next is out too, you know, so. So, yeah, it's going to be hard because it's like, oh, leaks. But then it's like, damn, uh, the high level players want to do next, you know, in, on their main accounts, because why would you want drops on a temporary mode when you can get drops on the main game and sell it or something right, or keep it? So, yeah. Yeah, yeah it's, not the best, it's not the best uh, decision, in my opinion. I think it needed it, to be delayed, but not by two to three months, mm-hmm. you know? Maybe uh, two weeks a month at the most. Feels like whoever's making these decisions doesn't play RuneScape, you know? No, no. for sure they don't. <laughs> yeah, Or even games in general. Like, they're just it, like, oh, yeah, we'll just boop, 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 boop. It's like, what are you doing? Have yeah. someone else run this. Just, yeah. what are you, Jesus. They're just thinking about, like, the financial uh, numbers or some shit, you know? Yeah. Whatever it is. And that's yeah. that's what kind of annoys me. It's like, why do we got people who may or may not be playing video games making big decisions like this? Wouldn't they even have the common sense to go, maybe I should let someone who knows more about this give me some hindsight? Yeah, I but just, then they again, don't. they don't. 
But then again, someone with hindsight is probably too busy gaming to do all the shit that that <laughs> other person does, you know? Uh-huh. Yeah. So. <laughs> just seems so, just so dumb. Just, just so dumb. Just Such an, yeah. It's like the, the smallest things that should not go wrong always seem to go wrong. <laughs> it's like, why? Mm-hmm. <sighs> just common sense, man. Who knows, dude? Um. But yeah, we've been going on for about over uh, way over two hours, boys. Should we wrap this up? Mm-hmm. I Probably. I think we should. Yeah, uh, we Cam, can everything. Cam, thank you very very much for taking the time to come on the podcast, mate. It has been an absolute pleasure, man. Uh, do you have any social medias or anything like that you'd like to shout out to the audience? Um, thanks for the invite. I I was kind of uh fanboying a little bit, like. Three pretty big RuneScape creators reached out to uh, the new OSR streamer, me, and it, 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 I'm, yeah, I'm very honored to be here. Um, We're honored to have you, brother. Yeah, yeah, thanks for the invite, all of you. Um, my only social media that I use is Twitter, really, and it's mainly just to like read out drops or like when I start stream. Um, yeah, and that's just my hands don't work. Thanks for having me on here, guys. It was a uh, it was great being on here chatting about pretty much everything. Yeah, old school RuneScape, fucking space weed. Um, <laughs> True. Yeah, life struggles. <laughs> oh yeah, life struggles. You name it. <laughs> yeah, it's been awesome. Uh, so yeah, guys, his links will be down below. Make sure you check him out. And uh, Cam, I definitely will be coming in your stream because I need to catch you killing the uh, the Hoon Leaf sometime because that just sounds insane, man. Oh, yeah. All right, man. Mm-hmm. More than welcome to see you in chat. That sounds fun. All right. Catch you guys later.